be wel to welcome now Gavin Ashenden to the show. He's a former Anglican bishop and a former priest of the Church of England and indeed former chaplain to the late Queen. Uh, good morning to you, Gavin. Julia, hi, good Thank morning. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. So where are you on this uh, big debate? Is the Archbishop of Canterbury uh, well be facing these calls to resign over failure to act, failure to speak out when it's now clear that he would have known and reports have suggested very clearly he would have known about a prolific child abuser uh, in John Smythe who went on to die in, in South Africa, moving from abusing in Britain to abusing South Africa. No one stopped him because people like Justin Welby didn't speak out. Should he go? Yes, I've been um, working with and sympathetic to some of the victims for quite some time and I'm one of the people who's been uh, furious and despairing about the intransigence of the hierarchy. There were three periods of failure for Whaleby and the press hasn't got them all, all quite accurately but it's important that I think we do. The first was in the 70s and 80s when he was part of the system and that's the point where we think he couldn't have failed to have heard something and therefore should have been on high alert. So there were, ru were rumours about... John yeah. Smythe in particular. Absolutely. And and there are people saying, we overheard Welby being warned off Smythe in a grave conversation. They've testified to it. It's clear he knew something. That means that when he became Archbishop in 2013 and was given a report uh, four years before Smythe's death explaining that that's the point at which he should have energetically leapt into clearing this thing up. But actually, there's, it seems like people get too posh to care at times. And his office, his, his, his chaplain, they didn't bother... And the problem is, if you're a victim and you phone up the headquarters and say, look, please, please pay attention. I'm not the only one. This really matters. Mm. And it's been under the wraps for 30 years. Do something, please. And then they, they lose it. Welby appears to have either lied or, or uh, there's an interview he had on um, LBC in 2017 when he said, well, we haven't done anything because we've told the police about it. The police are dealing with it. Well, that wasn't true. The police weren't dealing with it. And again, that was one of those moments where everything got stuck in institutional yeah. uh, incompetence. Um, the next period was 2017 to today. It's taken five years to get this making report into the public domain. And during this time, some of the victims who are my age and were beaten up when they were 16 and 15, they've died and Smythe has died. It took Channel 4 to bring this out into the open. It's just in the level of laziness, carelessness, yeah. unkindness is off the scale. Of course he should go. And, and especially when we know what happened in the in the Roman Catholic Church, and again, cover up, cover up, and it's sort of like, oh, and again, this has happened in the Church of England as well, um, but not so well publicised, where suspected uh, child abuse or even, you know, very proven child abuse. And, and priests and vicars, whatever, they kind of just moved along to a different parish or, or allowed to go abroad without police action. And the failure again and again for, for organisations like the churches to not report people to the police, sort of keep it in-house, keep it hush-hush, because of the concern we believe about the institution itself and its reputation. But, I mean, you know, it, less, more concerned about the reputation of a, of a wealthy church than concerned about the safety of children. You've got to question people's morality at that point. Well, it's not only immoral, it's really stupid. Yeah. Because it, it's, well, there used to be a culture when I was growing up, when, when a head of a department in the government, if the department had screwed up, would take responsibility and say, the only way I can restore trust is if I go. Yeah. I'll pay the price. Yeah. Actually, it wasn't completely my fault, but I've had the perks of being in charge of this, so I will pay. That's what happens when you take responsibility. Yeah. In this case, not only is Welby the, 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 the head of the institution, but he was personally at fault. Um, it, it is just, it is, it is so immoral to say I'm going to cling on here because I don't think I was sufficiently at fault. Uh, I, I mean, it, I, I just, and I'm afraid too that, that at fault at the moment are the bishops in the Church of England. One of them, a, a brave woman bishop in Newcastle, has broken ranks and said, yes, he must go. Yeah. The rest are sitting there silently on their hands colluding with the uh, with what's obviously a, a memo from t central office saying don't do yes. anything to rock the boat they should be rocking the boat and rocking it hard today as a matter of integrity and honor or how can we believe in any of them well indeed we've got we've got a petition seven thousand people have signed this and people within the synod general synod but you mentioned yeah the right reverend dr De helen ann hartley is the first bishop to call him for him to go um do you think there will be more bishops who do speak out well, it depends how cowardly they are. I mean, at the moment, they've kept their silence. 
Um, I'm hoping that, that, that he'll be advised his position is untenable by the end of the day and that he'll, he'll go. Yes. But, but frankly, I'm quite as disappointed with the people that he's appointed who are just sitting there keeping mum. None yeah. of them are saying he should either go or he shouldn't go. They're just... They're, they're a crave institutionally driven silence. And this suggests that the Church of England is rotten beyond Welby himself. Well, and other people will have to take responsibility. Well, that's it. And, and this is what we've just been discussing, is because, you know, the idea that you'd ever put your institution or your career above the safety of children, when we know about the abuse of the grand scale, and we uh, to have so many people come forward over the last couple of decades to say what happened to them, and speaking publicly about it, and the, and the extraordinary damage it has done to their lives, um, and many have taken their lives because of, of, of the, the yes, shame and the trauma. Right. Yeah. Um, it, it is untenable, I think, to most moral people that they would not speak out and, and to cover it up um, and, and not reporting it to the police and, and, and not investigating yourself. That That's covering it up. It is morally untenable, especially from a man who prides himself on apparently being so moral and talks <laughs> about modern day slavery, talks about migration, talks about the homeless, chides chides conservative governments i wonder when he's going to be chiding the labor government i don't know but difficult to guess his politics she lied um uh, about about anything they do wrong and yet and yet happy to carry on in his job knowing that he failed to act and there will have been children in south africa i guess we don't care about them huh but children in south africa who will have been abused by this man who would have been prevented from being victims one of them was probably killed. This man was arrested by the Zimbabwean police because a 16-year-old was found naked in his pool and charged with culpable homicide. They couldn't make it stick. He fled to South Africa. Everyone knew about this. I mean, these, I mean this it wasn't just domain. sex abuse, was it? I mean, he beat these children with canes. I mean, he uh, on an extraordinary scale. I mean, children you know, would be passing out from the beatings. It was a very weird and, and, and violent form of, of, of sadism, and once again, the, which, which means you can be fairly sure people talked about it. Yeah. It was, it was a, such a level of abuse that, 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 that you know, we all know what, what organisations are like. Things get out. Yeah. I, I'm afraid I don't believe Welby when he says he didn't know anything about it in 2013. Uh, but even if he didn't, anybody can be taking on that responsibility should, presented should have been looking into it yeah it, can, with, with, in, with you know enormous energy can i ask you finally this as a former chaplain to the late queen elizabeth um a point just made by by a caller audrey she just pointed out you know this man in his role is not just head of the church he's also officially the king's spiritual advisor do you think just on that those grounds alone he can't be a spiritual advisor to the king I'm very much hoping um, that, that there'll be people in the palace who will be speaking to both the Prime Minister and, and the Archbishop's office saying, uh, you are causing embarrassment more widely than your own institution. Mm. And, you know, you need not to think only of yourself as you have been, but there are others you need to think of in terms of your constitutional yeah. responsibility. It's just another reason why the idea that he can stay is so ludicrous and part of his own moral myopia. Do you think that he doesn't last the week? I hope he won't last the day. Really interesting to talk to you, Gavin Ashton. Thank you so much for joining us, former chaplain to the Queen, former Anglican bishop as well.